Father, we love you. This is a moment that I've been praying for all week. We've been hoping for all week. This is where we come up to the table and we open up the word of God and Lord, we eat that daily bread. We take the word of God and we, we, we call it good seed. It's the seed, it's incorruptible that we plant it in our heart. And as we do today, that that seed will produce a harvest, a harvest of blessing, a harvest of, 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 of abundance, a harvest of life change. Yes, a harvest of conviction to show us a way that we need to be walking in. A harvest of healing, whether it be emotional, uh, relational. And yes, even Father, those that are believing for a healing in their body. God, we thank you that that's made available through Jesus. God, thank you. We don't know what the person on their left and the person on their right are going to, going through. So Lord, we just take this moment and we say, bless my brother. Bless, bless my sister on the left and the right. May, may, Whatever is lacking in their life, I pray that you would bless them with abundance, more than enough. Lord, we're thankful for their life. Lord, for maybe they've been struggling right now, going through a, a difficult season. God, I pray that they would receive hope would rise in their life tonight. That hope would rise, that they would see what they've been believing for by, by this week, God. That they just walk into the answer to the prayer. We don't even know what that looks like, that they would encounter that by your spirit this week, maybe tonight, God. Thank you, Lord, for loving your people. God, thank you for, thank you for blessing your church, our church, the church that we worship in, the families that we love so much. Lord, I pray that everything good that happens today, that you would get all the credit, all the glory, all the, all the, all the honor for it. In Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. Man, I, haven't you enjoyed church so far already? God's here as good, isn't he? As Jesus, as Jesus was hanging on the cross between two thieves, he let out this word to tell us die. To tell us die was, was what he said when he says, it is finished, it is done, it is complete. What he's done is done, it is finished. And the book of Galatians is 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 a resounding, it is finished. Christ finished it. It's done. Therefore, there's nothing that we need to add to it. See, the Judaizers in that day, in that book of Galatians, uh, which is really a letter to many, many churches in the region of Galatia, they were trying to add to the work of Christ. It's Jesus plus this, Jesus plus that. And, and Paul's like, no, 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 that's what grace is all about. It's not Jesus plus anything. Jesus, period. Jesus, it is finished. Jesus, the work is done. And, and, and Jeremiah had a prophetic word that, that they were living in and I believe that we are living in today. And it talks about that there was coming a day where he would, he would uh, uh, birth this new thing, this new covenant, okay? Watch what Jeremiah 33 says. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant. Everybody say new covenant. A new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. This is the covenant that I will make after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my law in their mind, and I love this, and I will write it on their what? on their hearts. That's right. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. This is what he's saying. He said, listen, the, the, the day is coming where the God's people would, do, would do be directly, directed inwardly by God's spirit, not constrained outwardly by, by some law. See, Jesus is the only one that could cleanse and the Holy Spirit is the only one that can really direct. And the prophetic word was that day is coming. And ladies and gentlemen, we are in that day. And they were in that day in, the, in that new covenant. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna back up a little bit in chapter five. We're gonna, and before we jump into chapter six. Chapter five, we talked about it last week. Galatians, Galatians chapter five, verse 16 says, I say then, the apostle Paul, I say then, walk in the spirit, walk in step with the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The sinful nature wants to do what is evil, which is just the opposite of what the spirit wants, right? And the spirit gives us the desires, but they're just as opposite as what the sinful nature desires. These two 
are constantly fighting. They're constantly in competition with each other. So we're born again. The Bible says we're saved, born again. We're walking after Jesus. We're walking and being, we're followers of Jesus Christ. We have a new nature. We've been born again, made new. But that old nature, that old mindset, it always wants to drag us down. It says, I want you to walk this way. But your new nature says, no, no, no. I want to honor God. I want to walk with God. I, I, I want to be a blessing. And then that old nature says, no, it's all about me, myself, and I, right? Um, I, let's go do something that's selfish. And your new nature is like, no, 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 I, I, want, I want to be generous. I, I, I want to put others first. So there, we always live in, in that tension. Now, he says, when you're walking in the spirit or with the spirit in step with the spirit, that that's how you can overcome that old nature. It's not about thou shalt not, don't, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, don't do, don't do. He said, no, just do. Just walk with God. And then he says in verse 18, if, conditional word, if you allow yourself to be led by the Spirit, then you are not under the obligation of the law. The walking with the Holy Spirit is not a goosebump. It's not, it's not a feeling you get. It is a choice that I will walk in step with the Spirit of God. Last week, we talked about the, the works of the flesh, that this is what your life looks like when you embrace the works of the flesh. There were 17 different things, but then he says, uh, and the like. So it wasn't 17, it was et cetera, 17 plus whatever you can imagine that would cause your life to be a train wreck. They can all be kind of really grouped into three different groups, sensual, social, and, and, and uh, spiritual sins. And, and, and the reason God tells us not to embrace those is not because he doesn't, he's a killjoy, he doesn't want us to have fun. He's a loving father, he just doesn't want his kids to get hurt. If you read over that list of the works of the flesh, like nothing good comes from those things. It hurts the person and it hurts the people around the person. But, 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 but watch this. We're just, like, we're just like kids. God's a heavenly father and, and we're like, his, we are his kids and we do the same thing. We make excuses. Yeah, but I, you're being a killjoy. I want to do this. It's not because God's mean. He just knows that playing in the street is not the best idea. But what do we say as kids? You don't love me. No, I just don't want you playing in the street. God's not a kill joy. He just has a better way to joy. Oh, that's the preaching. I'll preach that right there. Right? That's not it at all. Bible study hack. When you're reading your Bible, pay attention to the verbs. Context is key. Look what Paul says, talking about, talking about the, the works of the flesh. We're not gonna go through, through them. I encourage you to go back last week and listen to, uh, to that message. But he says this, I tell you beforehand, verse 21, just as I, I also told you in times past, those who practice, verb, practice. Everybody say practice. Those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. The key word there is practice. He didn't say those who, who tripped into sin, those who fell into it, those who made a mistake, those who, those who did it intentionally but repent. Practice means that I am now embracing this as a lifestyle. I made the decision. I'm gonna do things my way. I am God, not God, that I am embracing that. He said, listen, if you have that mindset, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. He's not talking about messing up. He's talking about saying, no, this is me. I'm doing this. Take that, God, all right? Now, as long as we're on this side of heaven, sin, just so you always know, sin will always nip at our heels. It's, we live in a fallen world. We cannot help it. We woke up today and what? Sin was nipping at our heels. I'll prove it. How many of y'all want to stay in bed? Pastor stands up. Yeah, right? You didn't jump out of bed, God, I just want to go off, fall on my knees and worship for about an hour. No, you didn't. Okay. If you did, y'all pray for your pastor, you know. But, but watch, but, but if you're on Highway 400, you know, sin is nipping at your heels. Coming back from vacation, <laughs> sin is nipping at your heels. But on this side of heaven, that will happen. That's different than us embracing sin, okay? The world embraces sin. God's people, we flee from sin. 
All right, then Paul, Paul says, talks about the nine graces or the nine fruit of the spirit. He talks about the works of the flesh. Then here's the fruit of the spirit, verse 22. But the fruit of the spirit is, y'all know it, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, fruitfulness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, what? There is no, there is no law. If you're a note taker, write this down. There are three characteristics of fruit. First one is this, it's natural. It's natural. If a tree has life in it, it will produce something. It will produce a leaf. It will produce fruit. It will produce flowers, whatever. Jesus said, we talked about this last last week. Jesus said in John 15 that that I am the vine, you are the branches, all right? If you remain in me, you will, not might, not could be. If you just remain in me, you will produce much, much fruit, Okay, you've never walked up to a tree and the thing was sweating, sweating, trying to produce fruit. What did the branch have to do to produce fruit? Just hang on the tree. That's a word for somebody. You just hang in there. Come on, mama. Just hang on in there. Hang into that tree and watch God produce fruit through your life. All right, it's natural. How about this? It's, It's noticeable. Fruit is noticeable. You can tell what kind of tree you have uh, simply because what kind of fruit it produces. Fruit trees don't have signs. Fruit tree. They just have fruit. If someone has to tell you all the awesome things they are, it's because they're not sure themselves. You know, you can't judge me. No, no, but I can expect your fruit. Let's just keep on moving, shall we? Natural, noticeable. Well, here's another thing about fruit. It's nourishing. It's nourishing. A fruit tree's purpose is not to produce fruit for itself. It's to bless others. It's to feed others, right? Imagine you got two trees. You've got a fruit tree and you've got a Christmas tree. And I think that many people right now, they live a Christmas tree life when God wants them to live a fruit tree life. The the Christmas tree likes to put, put on ornaments and look good for others. The fruit just wants to feed and nourish others. The Christmas tree only comes out every now and then. Watch this. Fruit, if it stays on, it just keeps on producing. Fruit on a tree is real. Ornaments are fake. Just because someone is flashy doesn't mean they're real. Don't settle for counterfeit reality. And I'm just telling you, I, I, want, I, want, to be, I want to be like J- Jacob. In, in Genesis chapter 49, 49, Jacob called all his sons together. And he had a prophetic word for every single one. And he got to Joseph. And I, and I thought about this. And I thought, oh, dear God, please let that be the testimony of our families, of our church. Let that be the testimony of our church. He said this uh, about his son. He said, Joseph, he is a fruitful branch. A branch that is by a spring and whose branches climb over the wall. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm praying that next Saturday that our branches climb over the walls, outside the four walls of the church, that our branches climb over into someone's house, in, in, into the school system. And the, uh, the, the fruit of, our, of the spirit, the fruit of our lives begin to impact people outside the four walls of the church. May that be our testimony, Right? Now, now we come to chapter six. Are you ready? All right, 14 minute introduction. How do you like that? Here, number, chapter six, verse one. Brethren or sisterin, <laughs> if a man, I thought that was funnier than you, obviously. All right, brethren, <laughs> if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, judge them. No, restore them. Restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Hey, if you think you're mature, you think you're, you think you're spiritual, restore them. That word restore is, it, it's, it has the word picture of a mending of a broken bone. They can't restore themselves. They can't mend themselves. That's your job. That's our job. Judaizers didn't live this way. They, they didn't restore anything. They broke more, more bones. That while, while you're down, I might as well kick you harder while you're down, all right? But watch this. Paul says, no, 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 that's not right because grace, write this down. Grace says that restoration lies on the other side of true repentance. So once there's repentance from a fall, from sin, grace says, come on, come on, come back. I love you. Let me help you. You can lean on me. Come on, lean on me. Y'all don't even want me to sing. Yeah, all right. You can lean on me. 
I'm going to help restore you. I'm going to mend that broken heart. I'm going to mend that broken decision. It's okay. Why? It's not because I'm super spiritual, because I've been there before, and someone did that for me. Those who are spiritual restore such a one. Now, however, showing greatness, is the, this, this is the tension of the balance of this idea of, of restoration. Showing grace to someone doesn't mean that there won't be any consequences. And let me just speak to that right now. Let's just say, let's just say I, 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 uh, I like cars. I've been told I'm a car guy. I don't know how to work on the cars. I don't own cool cars. I just really like cars. And so I like them so much. That's true. Let's just, I'm making up a story now, so don't, don't put this on, like clip it and put it on YouTube, all right? Because I, got, I can say some crazy stuff if you, you give me sound bites. Say this afternoon, I took a test drive. I'm like, you know what? I really want a sports car like such and such. And I say, you know what? I don't have the money for this car, but what I will do is I want this car. I'm gonna commit grand theft auto. I'm gonna steal a car, okay? And because I'm not good at it, I don't practice stealing cars, I get caught in about, I don't know, 15 minutes, okay? What would they do? Well, because I stole a car, right? They would put me in, in, in cuffs and then put me in the back of the squad car. They would take me to jail. Thus, this is an illustration. Don't you sound bite me. We go, we go to jail. I'm in jail and I have this moment of clarity. I go, oh my gosh, what was I thinking? Oh no. And I get down on my knees and I say, dear G, I'm in cuffs. Do they have cuffs in prison? I don't know. So I'm in cuffs, I'm in a jail cell, and I go, dear God, I have sinned against you. I've committed, not just a crime, I've committed sin. I'm so sorry. God, please forgive me. Question, will God forgive me? Yes. Question, am I getting out of jail? No. no. <laughs> Sandra, you didn't have to say no so loudly because my wife would not, would not make bail. She's like, oh, you gonna sit there and pray for a little bit. You're going to talk to Jesus for a little bit on this one. <laughs> Would God forgive me? Yes. Are there still consequences for crime? Yes. Are there consequences for sin? Yes. Is there restoration? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I, I, there are consequences to things. Now, we don't like that, do we? No. But it's the truth. It is reality that, for example, my wife and kids would totally lose respect for me. Um, I, I'd lose the cre my credibility in the community. I'm done. I'm done, right? I would lose my job. Why? Because I, watch, I have disqualified myself for ministry. It's like, well, he got fired. No, he, God fired me. I'm now disqualified, okay? Um, write, write, write this statement down. Maybe this will help you. Grace We've already talked about this. Grace doesn't mean that we have a free pass to live recklessly. No, 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 that's not what grace is at all, all right? Also, restoration doesn't mean that everything will go back to the way it used to be. And that stings, and especially in this context of leadership in the church, that it simply means that we restore that person. Watch, restoration looks like this. We need to restore them to God. They've, they've grieved the spirit of God. And, and it, more than let's get them back in the pulpit, let's fix their home life. Let's make sure that they restore to that marriage, to the kids. And watch, and now we can restore them back to the family of God, to, to worship together. But to immediately take someone that has committed crimes and put them back in, that, that's just recklessness, right? He goes on to say, verse two, bear one, now look, I'm not gonna go steal a car, y'all don't, yep. Thank you, Jesus. Sandra, I'm not going to steal a car. But I wouldn't be offended if you bought me one. Anyway, so <laughs> verse two, I had to break some tension. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. So now I'm leaning on my brother. He's helping me. Wait a minute, pastor. We've been talking about no more law, no more law. We don't need the law. And it says now you're supposed to fulfill the law. No, no, no. I was been, we've been talking about, Paul's been talking about for weeks, the law of Moses. This is now the law of Christ. What is the law of Christ? The, the law of Christ is this, the law of love. Yes. Fulfill the law of love. Remember when Jesus was, was tested by that, attorney, that, that lawyer, he comes up and goes, hey, what's the greatest commandment? He said, that's easy. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and strength. With all your, that's the, the, the greatest commandment. And the second one is like it. Love your neighbor as your, 
as yourself. What is that? That's the law of, that's the law of Christ. The law of Christ is the law of love. If I commit the if I fulfill the law of love, I watch, I help others bear their burdens. Amen. Do you see the, do you see how that balance is? Beautiful, beautiful. Let's keep going. Now this seems like random, but he's answering a question. Verse six, those who are taught the word of God should provide for their teachers, sharing the good things with them. If you have a new King James version, it says remunerate. What does that mean? It means financially be generous. It means to give to the church, to be financially generous to the church. The reason it seems random is Paul is addressing something that was happening amongst the Judaizers. The Judaizers, were that religious sect, they get in there and start to cause division. And they said, listen, if um, there's no need to do that anymore. Um, and, and the reason they were doing that is if we can, th- if we can choke out the resources of the, tour- resources of the church, we can stop this message of grace that these teachers that Paul has put into place as pastors, we can cut that out. And Paul says, no, 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 don't do that. Be generous, be, be generous, continue to do that. And then he says this, And I love this verse. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that will he also reap. For he who sows to the flesh, for of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the spirit, will the spirit reap everlasting life. Now, one of my pet peeves as a pastor is hearing other pastors use scriptures out of context to justify something that they want. Ladies and gentlemen, can I just tell you that this is in context, 100% talking about resources. We don't have to borrow from other portions of the Bible to say that God wants to bless you. God literally wants to bless you. Now, if I would jump ahead and say, you know what? Um, um, he wants to give to you good measure. Press, God, I use my voice like this. Good measure, press down, shaking together and running over. Have y'all heard that, that message? Yeah. That's not talking about money. That's talking about judgment. Judge not, lest you be judged. Condemn not, lest you be condemned. And if you do, it will happen back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together. There's no need for me to use a scripture out of context because there's so many other ones that show that God wants to bless his kids. God wants to bless his kids. God wants to bless his people. He, he, he loves to pour out blessing and he does it through this way, the law of sowing and reaping, okay? Now he's, Apostle Paul also wrote to the church of Corinth, of Corinth over here in 2 Corinthians chapter nine. He said, remember this, same spiritual principle. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each one of you should give what you have decided in your heart. Ladies and gentlemen, in context, he's talking about finances. He's talking about money here. He says, hey, give what you have decided in your heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, not because of shakedown offerings, just what you've decided in your heart. For God loves a cheerful giver. That's right. And God, now look, I can't stop this. I can't stop this. This is a principle that God has set in motion. He says, and when you get involved in the law of sowing and reaping in the area of resources even, he says, and God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things at all times, having all that you need will abound to every good work. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the blessing that I want on my life. That is God's blessing on your life. Amen. The law of sowing and reaping, it doesn't just, it's not just finances, it's other areas of life as well. Uh, King Solomon said it like this, you want friends? Show yourself friendly. It's the law of sowing friendship, you're reaping friends. All right. Jesus said that, that um, talked, to, talked about all, all throughout the, his, his, his teachings, the majority of them were about resources. Why? The parables. Why? He knew that money would have a really big place in our life. Why? Because we just need it to, to, to function in the earth. Watch this. He also knew that it would really try to take the throne of our hearts. He would really try to call the shots in our life. That's great news. That's great news, that, that law of sowing and reaping. But it's also really scary news. Write this statement down. Maybe this will, this will help you. The law of sowing and reaping is awesome. Yeah, but it's also awful. It all depends on what kind of seed you're sowing. 
There's no sense in crying over a harvest you didn't get because of a seed you did not sow, right? When you read Galatians 6, it's 100% in context talking about money. He's talking about resources. And then he warns them, hey, I'm warning you, if you, if you financially cut off your church by spending all your money on, on yourself, on er earthly things, it, watch this, you, you're gonna reap corruption. Don't let that happen. It's plain and simple. You know, I, 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 one, one mistake that I've made over the years because I have seen as a pastor, because I've seen such corruption and I've seen such abuse, can I say, is in the area of resources. So I've shied away from that. You know what? I've, I'm in the wrong because I've robbed you the opportunity to hear God's will for your life. And what is that? Abundance, blessing, riches, okay? Now, when I say riches and abundance, again, I can absolutely feel the brakes being put on. I'm not talking about buy your pastor a jet. I don't want a jet. Sandra, you want a jet? We don't want a jet. You know what I want? I want you to have more than enough to give to every good work. To see a need and to meet a need. You see a hurt, you feel that thing. To be able to be a blessing. You're so blessed. You're, 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 you're not trying to, how are we gonna make it men's, ends meet? Now you're living like this. How are we gonna help them bless their mortgage? How are they gonna help them do this? How are we gonna be able to do this? When we first moved to this area of town, um, we had someone say, listen, we've got a, a, a house that we want you to, you can stay in, it's paid off. We want you to stay in that house as long as you need while you're looking for a house. And as a matter of fact, we wanna want bless, bless you as you plant your church. You can't do that unless you've got that. And it blessed me. I thought, man, they positioned us to get to where we are today so we can do what we're called to do. That's the blessing of the Lord. I'm not talking about living a rock, style, a rock star lifestyle. I'm talking about being blessed to be a blessing. I'm blessed to be a blessing. I mean, I'm talking about jets and <laughs> craziness. I'm talking about being fruitful. I'm talking about growing God's family, not just someone's bank account, but God's family gets bigger. Sandra and I haven't gotten everything right since we've been married 30 years this past December. But one thing that our parents were good about is they taught us the value and the joy of giving. They trained our hands when we were little to do this instead of this. And we're all born with this. And from time to time, our heart wants to do this. But because we were, they were so consistent, her parents and my parents, in doing this, no, we... We return the tithe. We don't give the tithe. The tithe does not belong to you. We return it back to God. Matter of fact, 100% is all God's. But he says, hey, return the tithe to the house of God. And now I've got 90%. Hold on, hold on. The Holy Spirit will say, hey, let me have this out of that 90%. Let's do this with over here. Let's be a blessing over here. Let's do this. And so that's what we've been able to do over the years. We will do without before we steal God's tithe. We will create margin. I'm not bragging. I'm just saying it works. It absolutely works. Because, watch, stuff just begins to happen. And it's like fireworks. It's like pow, 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 pow. Like, what, where did that come from? You need to know this, that your increase and in your blessing is not wholly fixed to your, your salary. God is your source, not your job. Your job is a way not the only way. It is a way that resources can find you. Maybe it's an investment. Maybe it's this, maybe it's that, whatever. That's why when we do our work, we do our work unto the Lord. Why? Because He is our source. He is the Father. We do things to please Him. And as we do things unto Him, He says, I can trust you with that. I can bless you with that. I see your heart behind closed doors. I can bless you because I've seen you praying in the shadows. I've seen you sweating in the shadows. I've seen you being faithful in the little. Now I'm gonna make you Lord over the much. Amen. A while back, our, uh, uh, we were meeting with our lender at the church. And uh, in one, one of the, the builder was there and, and, and we were meeting with the lender. They flew into town. They had a couple of people there. And, 
And he, he said, hey, everything looks great. You guys are strong. You're looking so good. You've been so, so diligent over the years of faithfulness. We showed him the last, the last 10 years, last decade. He's like, wow, I was expecting him, you know, I was expecting clarity, but not absolute transparency. Like here it is, God's been good. You know, and he said, you know, you understand your, your, your payment's gonna get bigger in this project. So are you, are you, um, how, how married to you are to this, the, the missions, this 10%? It, it looks on your line item, you give far above that 10%. Like you give 10% to missions. It's never been just. It's always more than 10% to local, national, and international missions. And I looked at him right dead in the face, right at that table and said, that's a deal breaker. We will not take God's uh, missions dollars. That is, does not belong in this house. That belongs in the world. That is it. We will, we will walk away from everything right now. He went, okay, okay, okay. I said, that is missions. That does not belong to us. We'll walk away, he said, okay. I walked downstairs and I looked over at the builder and I looked at Sandra and I stopped me in the doorway and it was just a download in my heart. I, I looked at it and I, stopped, and I grabbed him and I said, that was a test. I want you to know, either that was a test of the devil <laughs> or that was a test from God. Will you take what you have that should be in the mission field, that should be in the harvest of souls, it should be out there. Will you keep it in here so you can have a better space here? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm glad to tell you that our church has passed that test. For 17 and a half years, we have passed the test that we've been generous with our resources in the area of missions, that we will not stop going to all the world, to every tongue and every tribe. Yes, in, in this area. Yes, planting churches nationally. And yes, into the international mission field. We're not just gonna have bells and whistles here. We're gonna have it out there. We're gonna have a gospel out there. And, but this is what I know. This is what I've seen so, so many times because we passed the test, because we were faithful in the little. Watch this. God says, oh, I'm about to bless your house because you've blessed mine. Ladies and gentlemen, be encouraged today. God wants to do that in your life. God wants to bless you, bless you, bless you. And so finally, finally, at the end of Galatians, we started with grace. We're ending Galatians chapter 6, verse 18. Dear brothers and sisters, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you in spirit. Amen. It was grace at the beginning. It's grace at the end. What is it? It's God's riches at Christ's expense. We get to walk in and experience the un the unmerited favor and blessings of God, not because of what we did, but because to tell us die, it is finished. Because what Jesus did 2,000 years ago. Amen. Did you guys get anything out of that today? God wants to bless you. God wants to bless you. You don't need to get nervous about this, this idea of blessing. Hey, we're blessed to be a blessing. We're blessed to be a blessing. And, 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 and some of you, I wanna encourage you, believe God with your businesses, believe God on the job, do your work into the Lord and watch God multiply your life. He will absolutely multiply your life. And let me just speak to the ladies right now. We got the men, you got those big contracts coming up and you're believing God. I jokingly said this, but I kinda like, I had fun with it. I said, you know, Mary Kay had to start somewhere. Wouldn't it be cool to have a bunch of, like a pink fleet of cars out in the Highlands Church? What is happening at Highlands Church? They got a bunch of pink cars. Well, you know, Mary Kay's out there. <laughs> uh, maybe it's funnier to me, obviously. God's no respecter of persons. He'll bless, if you'll, if you'll be faithful, ladies and gentlemen, he will bless your life. Absolutely bless you beyond anything you can ask, hope, or imagine. He, that's his will. Why? Because he's a good father. So as we close today, as we close today, here are, here are three things that I want you to take inventory of your life. Let's look at these again before we leave. Does your life resemble a Christmas tree or does your life resemble a fruit tree? Are you more concerned with looking good or are you more concerned with feeding others? That's a motive question, isn't it? How do I, how's this gonna make me appear? No, 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 how will this bless others? Okay, how about this? Where does restoration need to take place in your own life? What phone call do you need to make to start that process? Do you need to help someone, those who are spiritual, 
restore them. Help them get back up. Hey, th- there's forgiveness there. You know, let, let's, let's, let's be the ones that not kick people when they're down. Let's help them back up. Back them up into God. Back them up into their home. Back them up into the family of God. Back them up into relationship. How about this? Does the law of sowing and reaping excite you? Or if you be honest, does it scare you? Are you financially involved in your church? You know what? God's been good to our church. We've been faithful. If you don't give, somebody else will. But God wants to bless you through the law of sowing and reaping. It would be my greatest joy to hear your testimony at the end of this build out and as we continue to plant churches, as we continue to serve our city, that you say, Pastor, I started in the journey of generosity. I took a step across the line of trusting God in the area of my resources. And can I tell you, he blew me away. He just blessed me more than I can bless myself. And I, I can't, I just can't shut up about it. I can't be quiet about it. This absolutely works. We don't give to get. We give to give because he's been good to us. But watch, but because we do, God always gives back to his people. Amen. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, thank you for this opportunity to preach your word. The the letter to the churches of Galatia, that speaks to our life today. God, forgive us for wanting attention. Forgive us for decorating our own tree. Lord, what we should have been doing the whole time is giving our energy to stink, being connected to the vine. This branch, the branch of Highlands and the families thereof, we stay connected to you and may the fruit of the Spirit stretch over the walls of our church that we can impact those all around the world. God, thank you for the people that help restore. Help us be a church that helps people back up instead of kicks them when they're down. Help us to be those that heal and those that that maybe they're struggling right now, that they can lean on us. We can stay connected to the the tree, to you, Jesus, as they lean on us, and then we can love and serve them well. Those that are spiritual, restore. And Father, for those today that you've spoken to, come on, try me, test me. In the area of resources, say what it is, money, finances, I can be trusted. There's no shakedown offering. Let God speak to your heart and then obey that and say, God, I thank you that the seed is in the ground and the harvest is on the way. Every time you give a generous seed financially to this church, you say this, you go and you grow and I'll see you soon in the form of a harvest. If you're here today, we never like to close out a ministry moment without giving people the opportunity to surrender their lives to Christ. Maybe you've never done that. Maybe you've never said, you know what? I I know about God, but I don't know God. I don't have a real relationship with, with the Father. You say He's good, and I've heard about His goodness, but I haven't experienced that myself. I've never taken a step across the line of surrender, and I've stopped being the boss of my own life and said, God, I want you to be the boss of my life. I want you to be the Lord of my life. I've never done that today. Today, I want to do that. Today, I want to be a follower of Christ. Maybe you're here today and you say, well, pastor, I've done that a long time ago. But if I'm being level honest, I'm not where I used to be. I've walked away from God, but I find myself today. I'm joining us online and joining you guys. I'm watching online. Or I'm, in, I'm in a church auditorium. And ever since I've, I've logged on, ever since I've put my tires on the pavement here at the campus, my heart starts beating like a trip hammer. And I just, I just keep hearing this, come home, come home. I love you. I love you. I want to restore you. I want to help you. I want to, I want to forgive you. Come home. Pastor, I want to do that with my life. I want to recommit my life to Christ. I want to renew my relationship with Jesus. And I like to do that today. On the count of three, either of those invitations, I'd love for you to lift your hand up on the count of three. Pastor, pray for me. Just pray for me. I want to, I want to make Jesus the Lord of my life. Or, Pastor, I want to recommit my life to Christ. On the count of three, I'm not going to drag it out. Ready? One, two, three. Slip your hand up in the air right now. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My goodness, thank you. Oh, man, you can put your hands down. Oh, church, isn't this exciting? Come on, let's pray this together. Let your heart agree with it. Everyone, say this out loud to encourage all the folks that raised their hands and said yes to Jesus. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for loving me. 
and I love you. Jesus, I'm a sinner and I need a savior. Save me. I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died on a cross and I believe that you rose from the dead. I'm sorry for being the boss of my life. I declare you as my Lord. I will follow you all the days of my life and I'll never be the same. Holy Spirit, fill me right now. Give me the power to make Jesus famous through my life. Thank you, God. My sins are erased. Heaven is my home and I've got joy and peace right now because I belong to God. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we put our hands together for all the people?